Hi, this is Mike from Microsoft Box and Reviews on How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the Silentium PC Navis F240 ARGB all in one cooler on the AM4 platform. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the Silentium PC Navis F240 ARGB all in one cooler on a AM4 motherboard. Now in this particular video, we're gonna be using the ASUS, the X570 Tough Gaming Plus. Obviously it is an AM4 board, so this is gonna be relevant for pretty much all AM4 platforms. So just follow along, it should be exactly the same. If you've got any problems, questions or comments, feel free to let us know in the comments section below, or you can reach out to us at our Discord or email mike at mikesunboxing.com. But with that said, let's get straight on with it. So the first thing we're gonna do is to prep the motherboard. So in order to fit this, we're gonna to need to remove the standard brackets which are included on the AM4 platform motherboards, remove the four screws and those two plastic retainers. We will be needing to use the standard AM4 backplate, so leave that in position. Next, we can go ahead and install our CPU. So grab the retention arm, pull it out to the side and lift it into the fully upright position. Then getting your processor, make sure the writing on the processor matches up with the writing on the socket, or alternately, there is a little tag in the corner which matches up with the corner marked on the CPU socket. Put the CPU in, make sure it's firmly in, and then lower the retention arm and let it click into place. Now we can install some thermal compound. It does come included with some Pactum thermal compound but for this instance, I'm gonna be using some Arctic MX4. Small blob in the center of the processor should be fine. At this point, you can either choose to use the spread method or any other method which suits before we install the cooler. Next, we're gonna use the four screws to actually attach to the back plate. These are the ones with the black plastic on. They are threaded on the ends. So attach one of these into each one of the four sections of the AM4 backplate. These can be done up hand tight or alternatively you can use the small spanner provided just to give it a little extra turn if you want to, just to make sure that it is firmly done up and isn't gonna come loose. When you've chosen the location for your radiator, you can go ahead and install the CPU mount, remove the plastic film, and you would like to do it so that the pipes are actually coming out and on the side of your IO shield. Now you can install the pump over the top of the screws and give it a little wiggle just to make sure that it's right away to the bottom. Next, locate your four tensioning springs and put one over the top of each of the four screws that are poking up through. Then you can locate the four fastening screws and simply put those over the top and do a couple of turns just to get them started. At this point now, you can get a cross-headed screwdriver if you wish, or you can just use your hands and tighten up the screws. Do them in a even fashion. So a couple of turns each side. If it gets a little bit difficult to do, you can just use the screwdriver and do a few turns. When the screws won't turn any further, you've come to the end.
When you've come to the end of that, you've then got the connections to connect for power. So a SATA connection to your power supply to power the pump. And then the PWM style connection, which should go to a pump header on the motherboard. Fortunately, on this particular board, the pump header we've got just down here. Most boards, you can choose which one is the pump. So simply plug that into a suitable header. And then the SATA connection can go to a SATA cable on your power supply. With the remaining connections, if you haven't done them already, then you've got your addressable RGB. There are two leads coming off of the two fluctus fans. These can be daisy chained, so you can unplug one of the ends and connect them together. And then you can plug in your five volt addressable RGB three pin header into a suitable port on your motherboard. This particular one has one at the top here. So we're gonna plug it in there. If you don't have an addressable RGB port on your motherboard, then you can use the included nano controller. So you plug the connection into the end of the nano controller. You can then plug in your cases reset switch into this header, and then finally use a SATA plug straight into your SATA on your power supply to provide power. In order to connect up the fans to the CPU header, there is an included extension lead. You'll find that the fans have been pre-wired. So the end is coming out of this end of the cooler. Plug in the extension, and then you're left with one cable, which would now go into your CPU fan header number one on your motherboard. Obviously, if you've got more than one, just use number one, and that is on the top here. So we can just plug that in. So the fans are controlled by the motherboard from the CPU header and the pump is controlled by one of the pump headers. So that is pretty much it. All you need to do now is obviously turn on your PC and make sure that everything is working. Check your temperatures. You should find with this particular unit, your temperatures will be uh, particularly good. And especially if you've got a decent airflow case. Like I said, any comments or questions, please feel free to reach out to us with the contact details below. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.